Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Basketball is a big thing in the Philippines. Um, one of the things I want to say on this: there's a lot of sports around that you ain't, you don't see. Um, one of my wife's cousins plays uh, quite high level in the uh, basketball leagues um, in the Philippines, but also he's quite famous um, within the Philippines. Um, but I go and try and see some of his games when he's in the area because he plays all over the country. But the reason I'm bringing this up is it's something to do because a lot of people forget when you retire or you go over there, you often get into this little bubble um, because you're dealing with the people around you all, uh, all day long. And it's like me, my mother-in-law will get fresh vegetables and stuff from the market. Um, she runs the store that we own next door. So getting beer or anything else, it's all in the store. Uh, my father-in-law deals with all my paperwork and getting construction materials, etc. Um, and then pretty much anything else, either me and my wife go out for a meal, but pretty much everything else, you don't really need to leave the, leave the house because everything's done for you. We have a laundry woman come and do the laundry. Um, all the bills, like I said, all the bills and stuff are paid by my in-laws go and pay all the bills and that for us. Um, Foods at the house. There's no reason to leave the house. Well, plenty of reasons to leave, but you get in a habit where you don't need to. Uh, where in the West you find you you get stuck with doing it for you know it, whether it's just going to the supermarket or whatever. It doesn't doesn't matter. You you got a lot of stuff that you do yourself because everybody else has got the same chores, um, and it's just different. So I say like the basketball. Ask the local guys where the matches are because they're worth going along to. They're quite a, quite a good game, um, and also you find that you'll meet meet some people there. You know, might make some new friends. I like the basketball myself, um, so I, I go quite quite regular when I'm in the Philippines. I'll take the motorbike along. My, me and my father-in-law um, will travel to go and watch the games. The funniest. Funniest thing, it could have been a fatal accident actually. Um, we went over the mountains uh, where we we are in Mingla Nilia, we've come through Naga and then gone over to Toledo. And it's gone over this mountain pass and then um, watched the match coming back in total darkness. Um, we're doing probably about 70 miles an hour on, on my motorbike, my father in law's on the back. and. Basically, there's a little plywood sign at the side of the road that basically says the road's gone. <laughs> so they, they basically take the road away for resurfacing, so it's hardcore. So you've got about this much of drop where the concrete or whatever it was, the surface was, has been cut away. So you've suddenly gone like that into um, a gravel pit basically uh, I remember it because my father in law didn't even batter an eyelid we were trying to keep the motorbike straight at 70 miles an hour jumping off the off this um, where the road had ended because literally they put the sign where the road ended so you're sort of like looking over to read the sign as the motorbike leaves the road um, but we, we didn't crash we managed to keep it straight and just carry on um, at those those times of night, you do have to be careful though. Um, I mean, that's a prime example, bad signage. Uh, but you also get the, the wandering drunks that just stagger into the road. You get stupid amounts of dogs that are wandering around or asleep in the road because the, the tarmac's warm or the concrete's warm. Um, you get pedal cabs, which are the, the uh, mount, uh, what do you call it, a BMX with a sidecar on it going up the road with no lights on you get the buses with no lights on you get the uh, tricycles with a light but it might be a candle <laughs> um, so when you you're driving quite quickly you gotta be very very careful on these roads um, I hadn't expected the road to disappear the rest of it I expected um, lesson learned but it was an interesting evening but I do recommend going to the basketball matches um, 
There's also the cockfighting and stuff. I've never been to a cockfighting match because my wife doesn't want me to go, which may not sound a big thing, but then she discourages from anybody taking me. Uh, there's been a few times things have been arranged and then my wife's talked to my mother-in-law and my mother-in-law's basically talked to cousins, uncles and whoever basically not allowing me to go <laughs> because it's not that she's stopping me going, it's uh, stopping anybody taking me. Um, there's reasons behind that because there's been, the Philippines has got a lot of gambling issues uh, as such it's not it's not a done thing in in our family to be um, gambling although I'm not going for the gambling it's just for the experience but yeah so I've never actually been to a cock fight uh, but my father-in-law actually breeds and looks after fighting cocks for um, himself plus other members of the family it, quite a big business I, I I know one of our relatives he he actually breeds them for selling and I remember his feed bill for the he's spending I think it was about 30,000 pesos a week in animal feeds um, bear in mind these are quite expensive fighting cocks but 30,000 pesos is a lot of money because um, he was asking me to invest but I was overseas at the time because that's a sell license to print money if you're not actually fighting them but you're actually selling them <laughs> the only risk you have is MPA to be honest um, which happened to where was the guy I think it was on the whole no 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 it wasn't it was it was Negroes Island the, this guy has a farm for breeding the fighting cocks and these MPA that asked for, I think it was some money plus three or four cocks to eat. Uh, the guy refused. The following day, he got up to find they'd beheaded every single uh, cock and chicken he had. Um, and it, it's just the way it is. Um, but we generally don't have any of those issues where we are. Um, but. A lot of the fighting cocks are done on other islands because it's cheaper. Um, people are cheaper to employ, land's pl plentiful, and as long as you ain't got uh, issues with MPA and uh, probably in Mindanao, more the the MILF, um, then you're not really going to have any issues. It, it, then normally the people will be a bit of a pain. The, the relationship with the fighting cocks and the gambling pits etc and the police is something not for me to really discuss but there is quite a close relationship with those entities but yeah sports in the Philippines love the basketball um, a lot of the places aren't air conditioning so be warned I normally just wear a vest top there is no point wearing anything else unless you like being soaked in sweat um, but they're quite a good atmosphere. You like, you could have like a crowd of four or five hundred people in one of these events. Um, the fighting pits for the, the fighting cocks never been. Um, not from lack of trying, <laughs> but maybe you like that. Airsoft's not also a very big sport. There's, I believe there's over a quarter of a million airsoft players in the Philippines. Um, which, if you don't know what it is, it's like firing these BBs at high velocity. Um, as a sport, you attack each other. Uh, you'll have teams, multiple teams. Different events have different things where they set up um, hostage rescues, all, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's quite good fun. Great way of burning off some sweat. I mean, I used to play it quite a lot. And if you look through on my earlier videos, uh, nearer the start, look for Iskalawag. Um, that was my old airsoft team. Because uh, I've been abroad so much and been busy with work, I haven't had time to play, but I do enjoy competing in airsoft. Um, we, we, we compete on the uh, Gwen Garcia uh, tournaments, for example, um, and other events. It's good fun, really good fun. But it'd be, I'd say I recommend getting shot first so you get used to the pain because um, it can lead bruising, etc. Um, and, but once you get used to it, it's not really that bad. 
just make sure you got very good eye, uh, eye protection because there has been people blinded on it. Um, but yeah, S ops good fun. But for those not so keen on shooting it, get, shooting or getting shot, uh, highly recommend basketball for a sport in the Philippines to take a bit of time out, get you involved in something local, and also you can follow the teams around the country if you want. And people appreciate the white guy. Uh, I'm not being funny. I know, I know other people come from other countries. I'll just say that as a foreigner. You know, it's not all oh, just the white guys. It, they do appreciate other people going along. I remember going to an event where the the team is actually run by a mayor, and I've gone along for my cousin, my my wife's cousin, and he's like waved up to me, and th this mayor is looking at me, wondering who the hell is this? There's a white guy at the event because there's no there's nobody else there that's a foreigner, um, and he's talking, doing the team prep because he's the uh, team coach, etc. And he keeps looking at me because he's thinking, what's this guy doing here? What's going on? Um, he wasn't aware that I was actually related to one of their top players. But anyway, enough blabbing on. I've got to go back to work. But thanks for listening.